Commissioner, Dr. Maria, and also Dr. Susil, um, Mr. Rati, many of my colleagues from the Council, from the government, from the private sector who are present here. I am a non-specialist in the area that you are discussing, but uh, I thought I should come here to learn, and in fact it's a learning experience. Thank you very much, Dr. Rami, for an excellent presentation covering all aspects of managing by tribe. And uh, in fact, uh, some of the queries uh, which uh, I was uh, bothered with uh, were uh, you know, reflected there with specific answers and uh, based on uh, science. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, this is the fifth meeting uh, on white flight, uh, that signifies uh, uh, the uh, process and also uh, the importance uh, that uh, we uh, attach in this country to uh, this particular problem. Uh, but this also signifies that uh, the problem is uh, uh, not easily surmountable and it's a big challenge. And had it been a small issue, we would have really finished this in just one sitting or without even convening a meeting of uh, people who, who, who matter. So, uh, so given this uh, background that uh, we have uh, really failed uh, in containing a white flight uh, as a system, uh, you know, uh, countrywide. Uh, whether it is private or public or uh, you know or other organizations international national uh, we have failed in the country uh, to do the needful uh, to contain and control and manage white lies and that is the reason why I thought I should come here though the, the time is always limiting and this is here uh, I am here to emphasize the point that uh, we are lacking very seriously some uh, in our efforts uh, to manage uh, a white flight. Uh, we leave uh, research in between on some of the uh, you know, kind of aspects which we consider as a minor uh, you know, or, or importance uh, or no importance at all. And there are several examples and this is one example that uh, the country probably did not bother for some time thinking that it's a minor one. And uh, we are we have one example now that uh, it is a major one, and uh, you know we have a devastation because of the pest. And uh, in one region, and that could be other regions. And since given that white fly has a very broad uh, host range, uh, and then uh, affects uh, many crops, as you also presented. Uh, so uh, that this calls for a serious attention of all concerned uh, uh, to. Uh, define strategies, very well thought out strategy which was presented, whether it is Australian experience or Arizona model or whatever. So I believe that there are examples before us uh, to uh, seriously uh, look into uh, and also examine from our viewpoint and then see uh, what best can be done. Uh, uh, there are uh, several points uh, which were uh, mentioned. But I believe that uh, 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 as a kind of geneticist, uh, 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 the first and foremost is uh, that having certain degree of resistance in our varieties and hybrids. Uh, you know how much we have really progressed in that front. We say desi uh, types are tolerant. Uh, how much we have really exploited that? Why can't we have a vigorous program to exploit that whatever tolerance we have uh, in the commercial? you know, uh, uh, varieties or hybrids, and that we grow. It might take five years, but if we plan, had we planned beforehand, we could have done something, but even if we plan today, uh, you know, and, uh, and very systematically, scientifically, uh, we should be able to do something, uh, you know, uh, and we have uh, some uh, kind of variation in desi types, I believe, and uh, so we have some germplasm which can be exploited, must be exploited, uh, you know, as a, as a uh, our DDG, uh, uh, crop sciences here, and also horticulture DDG, which also in entomologist <laughs> by uh, profession. So both are here, and uh, we should uh, plan a program uh, uh, for that. Second is that uh, you know you said that uh, B type and Q type of uh, you know on the the, the insect, and uh, one is more susceptible to uh, the insecticide. 
uh, but the other is resistant, though it's not so uh, devastating. Uh, that's what I understood what you presented. But do we really understand the population biology of this insect in this country? How much we have really studied the population biology? And uh, uh, if we understand the population biology, uh, you know, how many strains and then how they really uh, prevail and, uh, you know, uh, and their life cycle. And if you understand that, probably it would be easier to manage. And it has to be a science-based management rather than a superfluous uh, management strategy which is going to fall apart at the end of the day. So, uh, so we have all concern from the council and from the DAC. And I believe that uh, council, uh, on behalf of the council, uh, I must emphasize, my colleagues are here, that it has to be a science-based uh, strategy. And uh, science uh, would uh, uh, be uh, successful uh, if we have uh, studied uh, in a robust manner the population biology of the insect. Uh, how many biotypes are there and how they behave, whether there are intermatings taking place and how much of intermatting takes place. If we say nothing is happening, you know, that means we have not said it. So, so that means, uh, you know, uh, this is another issue which we need to really address and I believe uh, colleagues would uh, you know, take this into account. Uh, insecticide resistance, uh, you know, uh, my colleague Dr. Kanti is here and uh, he has studied quite a bit uh, and, and in case of uh, cotton, uh, bollworm uh, and, uh, you know, reported, uh, you know, uh, bollgut too also. You know, yesterday we were replying to a parliament question uh, uh, and the bollgut too also uh, is, uh, is failing. Uh, so, uh, so you have, uh, you know, uh, 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 that is uh, against Bt, uh, uh, so protein. Uh, so against insecticide also, you know, there are a uh, number of studies. And in case of white fly, uh, why so frequently we find that insecticide resistance appears? Uh, what is the mechanism? How much we understand in terms of mechanism? I do not know because I haven't studied. Uh, my colleagues uh, will be able to answer this question better. If we have perfect answer to this and we have understand, and why this insect changes uh, so fast that uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, frequent uh, resistance developing against insecticide. And I am told, if I may be wrong, or I have been given a wrong information, that maybe 20, 30 different insecticides and, uh, fall, have fallen short of, uh, you know, uh, giving their effect uh, as expected. Uh, you know, maybe uh, I am wrong. Uh, so if it is correct, then it's a very serious situation. Uh, that uh, you know the the insect the insect is evolving so fast and uh, we do not know why and uh, I know if you if you understand that's fine we must build out a solid document uh, on uh, these uh, aspects uh, you know on uh, resistance uh, breeding on uh, insecticide resistance uh, evolution of the insect and management strategy uh, based on that and also uh, on uh, uh, the population biology of the insect. And uh, if we, in totality, if we study this, and this is one example, if you take, uh, you know, white fly as an example, we can have several models, uh, uh, you know, uh, for instance, rhizoctonia uh, disease uh, are a complex. And we can have several uh, replicated, uh, you know, systems in place so that we study the entirety and then design strategies based on those findings which are science-based. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, in this context, uh, what was uh, talked about is uh, the spurious uh, insecticides. Uh, but before that, spurious, uh, let me mention uh, my colleagues, uh, I'm told, were involved in monitoring of this. And uh, why we could not, uh, you know, uh, uh, identify or determine uh, or detect, uh, you know, uh, uh, that uh, something is emerging. If we have a monitoring system in place, uh, you know, uh, and uh, adequately addressing uh, the uh, emergence of uh, the white fly, uh, we could have uh, done some uh, forewarning, and uh, we we failed to do that. And uh, only when it came in a big way and then devastated the crop, we went there and studied. Oh, this has happened. But we we failed to really do that. And uh, why we we could not do this? We must really examine this. And if we have we have programs in place, we have people in place to do the things, and uh, we should be able to deliver. And uh, so, so people, uh, you know, at the uh, respectable positions, uh, you know, uh, they should see and look into it that uh, we don't fail uh, in, uh, you know, identifying uh, the reasons and the time, uh, uh, the uh, when it is uh, going to emerge in a big scale. And uh, some years ago, there was uh, in, in rice, 
uh, we have uh, you know, uh, swarming caterpillars. Uh, they suddenly appear. And then there was uh, e pest surveillance and all those mechanisms in place. And then you, know, uh, you can uh, keep doing surveillance and then and do uh, forewarning and that uh, this is going to happen. And then you can have a control measure in place even before, because overnight they will eat away the crop. And unless you have adequate uh, amount of uh, uh, pesticide and uh, right quality of pesticide available, you will not be able to control it. Uh, so, so, so that's the reason why you need to really have a monitoring system in place and how robust it is, we need to examine and uh, from ICR perspective and also uh, from DSC perspective, uh, we, we must uh, examine this and, uh, uh, and uh, re-energize this uh, so that uh, we don't fail uh, next time. Uh, I was talking about spurious pesticides, in fact it was mentioned that uh, spurious pesticide is a serious concern. And which name it appears, maybe some branded company who are sitting here and their names it appear, whether they have done any study that uh, where from it comes and whether it has been handed over to our uh, you know, inquiry system, government inquiry system, that uh, there are uh, spurious pesticides being manufactured by some people, whether somebody has been cut in the process. And how, how the, the companies, manufacturing companies are dealing with this. It's not just responsibility of the government. So the, the, uh, there is also a shared responsibility. And if there is a shared responsibility, the spurious pesticides which are appearing in your name, uh, your brand name, then you should have also some responsibility and measures to, to, uh, to reduce that or eliminate that particular process. And report to the government that such and such things are happening. And what is that action the companies have taken from their side uh, to reduce this menace? And probably that needs to be really in place. We have plant protection authorities and officials are there. You know, how much we have a mechanism in place uh, to address this issue. And it appears that, uh, you know, it, this is a complete failure in the process, uh, you know, that uh, we are, uh, the farmers are suffering. And uh, how long this should, this should continue? And we all sitting on the dais and also sitting on the hall, in the hall have a responsibility in this context. And I believe that, uh, you know, Dr. Sandhu uh, showed me that, uh, you know, there is already action plan. And uh, we keep discussing strategies. I think we should move from strategies to action plan and define it and implement it and uh, so that uh, the white fly problem doesn't occur in the next, the next crop season. And let us ensure this. And even if it's not happening next crop season, we, we should not really relax this and it should not happen next time. And uh, how do we really ensure this? A proper action plan should be in place and define players uh, you know, to implement that. And uh, so that uh, we have uh, a shared responsibility, as I said. And also, in the process, we can also share our credit that we have won and won together by joining hands. Uh, I don't have uh, um, uh, anything else to say. That could be many other points. And uh, so uh, I'm not, as I said, I'm not an expert uh, to tell you anything very specific. And uh, uh, some points which uh, came from what I uh, heard from uh, my uh, previous speakers, I only tried to put those points before you. With this, I thank uh, all concerned uh, for inviting me to be here and uh, giving me this opportunity to learn uh, from Dr. Rami, particularly, uh, you know, that uh, so much of science uh, could be behind managing white fly. And I believe India will learn from this and put science in place so that we succeed to control and manage white fly. Thank you very much, friends.